Navi Central Radio's official sponsor for our third annual aviation month is Winty Aviation T-Shirt Art. Winty is an aviation-themed t-shirt business designing and printing aviation-related graphics for pilots, aviation businesses, and aviation enthusiasts worldwide. Winty can print one or 100 garments upon request within a reasonably low turnaround time, including a one-stop shop solution for all your graphic art needs, from logos, business cards, book covers, and banners. Contact Winty.com today in order to find out how your design can become a reality. Get ready and start your engines for our third annual Aviation Month on Savvy Central Radio, where eight aviation businesses share their knowledge and wisdom. For your chance to win an official Savvy Central Radio third annual Aviation Month t-shirt, like our page at facebook.com slash Savvy Central Radio. Hi, Jason. Welcome to Savvy Central Radio. How are you? I am absolutely wonderful today. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, and I'm so excited that you were able to join us for our third annual Aviation Month. I'm excited for you to share with our audience a little bit about your journey and what led you to the career of aviation and becoming a certified flight instructor. Yeah, absolutely. So it started really, I was really, really young, and my grandmother uh, used to take me out to the airport. Uh, This is back when you could hang on an airport fence. No one, uh, you know, would cart you away in handcuffs or anything crazy for getting that close to an airport. Um, and uh, we would pack a little lunch and we would head out to the airport. We would just sit at the Ocala airport and just watch airplanes take off and land. Uh, you know, from there, the, the, the bug was in me, uh, and, and I knew that's what I wanted to do. And it started with, um, I was heading out to the young Eagles flights and I was, I was that kid that was trying to, you can only go to the young Eagles once. I was mm-hmm. that kid that was trying to sneak into the young Eagles twice, you know, <laughs> Oh, maybe this guy won't recognize me and I'll go and I'll get another ride and I'll, I'll jump around back in line again. Uh, and, and I continued to, uh, I was just that, that kid, that squeaky wheel that got the oil, you know, out at the airport who, uh, was always trying to, to bum a ride off of somebody. Um, in high school, our, our high school is about two miles, actually, from the, uh, from the Ocala Airport. Uh, and I used to skip class and head over to the Ocala Airport and take flight lessons. And my flight instructor used to always say, like, shouldn't you be in school today? I said, no, today's a half day, don't you know? <laughs> um, and uh, I, I was a bad kid in school. But I, I loved aviation. And, and I knew if I wasn't going to pay attention in school, I sure had to take aviation somewhere. Uh, and, uh, and we're very fortunate to have done that so far and continuing to do that. Wow. And wouldn't you know, today you're a tremendous teacher and here you are bumming out of school. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that ironic when you, when you say it that way? Thanks a lot. Jeez. <laughs> but it's funny. You're, you're an amazing master teacher. and But, sure. you know, it's because you were focusing on your passion. Sure. And what I love about aviation, it's got all the elements that you learn in school. I mean, it combines mathematics. It combines critical. You're mm-hmm. using your physical body. I mean, there's not a part of all the different parts of, well, you got to read as well. you got to read the checklist. <laughs> sure, sure. There's so many aspects of what you learn in school that you actually apply when you're in the cockpit. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm hearing your story here and hearing how you hustled and were trying to bum rides and going to the... Young Eagles, yeah. Young Eagles and trying to get up there as many times as you can. It must have been really hard for you to get started with flying lessons. Like, how did you do that being so young? I mean, how did it work out for you? Yeah, well, starting out, you know, 16-year-old, 15-year-old kid, I mean, I started lessons even earlier than that in some cases, looking back at my logbook. Um, I used to go up to the flight school owner and say, listen, can I wash your airplane in exchange for an hour of flight time? And if you've seen airplanes in Florida, as I'm sure in, in New York in the summertime, they get real, real dirty. Um, so that was no problem. I used to wash airplanes. I used to wash the, you know, the flight school owner's car. I mean, anything it took to get flight hours. And, and, and it's, it's funny. Now I find myself in that same position. Now I'm that, that person that these kids are coming to saying, Hey, Mr. Jason, can I, if I wash the plane this weekend, can you take me up? You know, I'm like, we're going to, the airplane's going to have to dry after you wash it. Of course we're going to take it flying, you know? So, uh, we take the kids up and, and, and try to, uh, you know, give back to the youth as much as possible, just as, uh, as we got lucky, uh, you know, putting in that sweat equity and, and, and saving and being smart about going about your flight training as well. Yeah. I like that you mentioned this, Jason, because I've heard a lot of complaining from people, oh, I can't do flight instructing, it's too expensive, it's impossible, and young, old, middle-aged, whatever, 
often money comes up as, as I can't do this. But what's interesting is even, and I was telling you earlier that when I was in my 20s, I was obsessed with dancing and it was flamenco that I was obsessed with. I was doing it every moment of the day that I wasn't working or hanging out with friends or doing whatever. And uh, there came a time where I could not afford the $150 worth of dance classes I was taking a week. Oh. And my dance teacher came up with a wonderful proposition. He said, I need my house cleaned. Uh, would you do it? And I said, well, heck yeah. Of course. Yeah, you know, so I got a whole week's worth of dance classes for cleaning his house on, on every other Saturday. It was a totally rocking agreement. So, yeah. I mean, anyone out there who says it's impossible, there's different ways to go about it. I mean, this teacher was really smart. I mean, he had me cleaning his house. He had another student making him dinner and cooking him meals. I was like, <laughs> 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 That is funny. Keep that in mind, Jason. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'll have uh, I'll, I'll have all the chores done before Ashley gets home. You yeah, know? <laughs> you might even have a babysitter out there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. Well, and one thing that really bothers me, Jason, is that a lot of flight instructors I've been with, because I've taken some flight instructing, is they're not in there for the passion of flying, or, or I should say teaching the student, but more for building their flight hours and moving on to bigger and better things in aviation. Yeah. And and you're not like that, which I, is totally rocking. But how can students out there who are saying, okay, I want to learn to fly, but how do I know to find the best teacher? How do I go about finding a teacher that's out there for me and not building their own flight hours? Sure. And, and that's a fine line to walk to because not everybody's meant to be a teacher, yet Everyone becomes a flight instructor on that path, at least to, to the airlines or to, to build flight time, really, unfortunately. Um, and, and just a very quick uh, plug, um, our, our newest book, and it's a free book, uh, so it's not really a plug. It's called The Private Pilot Blueprint, privatepilotblueprint.com. And um, it's really what I wish I would have known before I started my flight training. <laughs> There's so many things. Hindsight is truly 2020. And, and finding a flight instructor is one of those difficult things because what typically happens is you march into a flight school and uh, they say, hey, uh, welcome. We'd love to have you. By the way, this is Joe. He just landed. He's going to be your instructor. Why don't you guys go start your first lesson? Mm -hmm. And you have no clue. Well, will Joe and I, will our personalities match? Will our schedules match? For example, I like to fly during the weekdays. I want to take my weekends off, relax with the family. I'm a Monday through Friday, preferably in the mornings type flyer. Now, if this prospective student, uh, you know, has an, a normal nine to five job and can only fly weekends, I may not be the best flight instructor for them. We may not, I'm a very strong personality. I am a very high D on that disc profile. Um, I may not jive with somebody with a similar personality. Two high D personalities would clash in a cockpit like that, especially when we're supposed to be working together as a team. So there's a lot of different things to look into. These flight instructors should be interviewed by you as the student. Don't ever march into a flight school and just be happy with them saying, here's the flight instructor, good luck, go have fun, see you, hopefully 40 hours and a few thousand dollars later with a license. Well, it doesn't always work out that perfectly. I like to ask questions like to a flight instructor, what are your aviation goals? Mm -hmm. And if that flight instructor comes back and says, well, let me tell you, um, in about another 100 hours or so, I'm sitting in a Delta hiring pool one day waiting for the phone call. And you're thinking, well, geez, you know, you're going to rack up that time really quick. I could be just about ready for my check ride, and you're going to peace out on me. And I'm not going to have a flight instructor, and it's going to set me as the student back. You want to ask these kind of questions to see. It's okay for them to have airline aspirations. It's okay for them to have goals, but do their goals coincide with your timeline? So find those sort of things out. You conduct the interviews and ask questions like what their goals are what their schedule is, talk about their pass rate. Any flight instructor who tells you they don't know their pass rate is lying to you mm. because truly the FAA will crack down on a flight instructor if they if they get lower than an 80% check ride pass rate. That instructor then has to go up for a remedial training to make sure that they're even fit to teach these students. So flight instructors keep a very close eye on maintaining it above that 80%. So every flight instructor knows that number, trust me. So don't hesitate to ask for that uh, as well. And, that, and that's where I would start. Uh, that is certainly, gosh, if you do that, you are already leaps and bounds above everybody else that gets into aviation. 
Wow, I, I had wished I had that advice when I went into a couple of flight schools. I had a little bit of a horror story happen when I went into a flight school several years ago for a discovery flight. Mm -hmm. And I told him I want to take flying lessons. I'm so excited. And he said, oh, no worries. We're going to put you up there with so-and-so. And I said, great. Um, but isn't it a little yucky today? It was overcast, completely overcast. Yeah. And they said, no, no, no. Planes go really fast. We'll bring you to another state and we'll practice there. I'm like, well, really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, what do I know? So I, I jump in the plane with this person who I hadn't known. I was the only second student he'd ever been up with as a CFI. He's never, oh. he's a brand spanking new CFI. And he actually was uncomfortable about taking me up. He said to the um, the school, are you sure this is a good idea to take her up? And they said, yeah, 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 take her up. Well, it was rocky. It was jumpy. Uh, I couldn't see anything out the window once we got about 100 feet up. Wow. So Basically, I was a scared passenger yeah. uh, who wanted to jump outside the window, and this poor flight instructor wanted to jump out the window, too, when he saw me hyperventilating and yeah. freaking out. And, and, and then they charged you for it at the end. That's the hard part. They did. It was tremendous. They charged me several hundred bucks. Sure. It was an expensive lesson. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. For both you and the instructor. <laughs> exactly. So... Jason, I'm curious, you are a, a business owner, a flight instructor, and you have a wonderful business, m0a.com, where you teach people how to fly and you put out amazing instructional videos. What has been some of the major hurdles or challenges you've come across in running your business and how did you overcome them? Gosh, the, the hardest thing, obviously starting out is always hard, mm -hmm. but starting out when I was an 18-year-old kid, um, had a little bit of my my business background was just trading time for money. It wasn't. Uh, I, I come from an entrepreneurial family, so it was always kind of ingrained in me. Uh, but I originally thought I would just be a flight instructor for some flight school. I became a flight instructor, and that same flight school came to me and said, "Jason, we're so happy you're a flight instructor. We want to pay you eleven dollars an hour to work for us." And I thought. <laughs> you have got to be out of your mind because you were just billing me 35, I think as high as $45 per hour. And you're only paying these poor flight instructors $11 an hour, you know, of that. That's just not fair. So I decided to strike it out on my own, which was a, a real scary proposition, uh, you know, at that point, because you have, you have bills to pay, rent comes due, everything else. And um, I remember I had two friends that expressed interest in learning to fly. Uh, and I reached out to them. I said, listen, if you guys buy this airplane, it was a Cherokee 140, it was $25,000. I said, if you guys buy this airplane, I will teach both of you to fly in it for free, as well as just give me the right to go out and find other students. I'll charge what I want for instruction, and whatever we make from the aircraft rental, we can split you know, amongst the two of you. Uh, and we did that, and they learned to fly. And I had student after student after student coming. Uh, I was 18 years old, making 35 bucks an hour. I, I was in, you know, hog heaven at that point. Um, you know, so learning learning the business aspect uh, very early on was tough. But you have to think outside the box. Uh, I've always been an out-of-the-box thinker from washing airplanes for flight hours to convincing two friends to go buy an airplane. You have to think differently. Uh, you can't think how everybody else thinks. Uh, otherwise, you're, you're just no different. So uh, thinking outside the box was uh, – but it's scary to do that mm -hmm. at the same time. So there, there's, there was a lot of hurdles. I mean, I, we could have an Excel spreadsheet full of every hurdle we went through. But really, you know, starting out um, and, and taking those leaps of faith – uh, where it was really, really um, difficult, but so rewarding when we you look back on them. Geez, you know how many, you know, almost a decade later. Yeah, wow. And I, you mentioned a couple things that sprang out for me: trading time for money. Which, interestingly, a lot of our listeners uh, run businesses and their service-based industry businesses like yourself, and I find a lot of them coming to me and talking to me about how they're struggling because they're still in that mindset of trading their time for dollars. Sure. And it's a sure. hard thing to break out of, and, and I'm guessing for you it might have been a little bit easier being you came from an entrepreneurial background, so you saw other options. So on, on the topic of trading time for money, um, I, I started doing ground schools, and, and I was doing... You know, you're making 35 bucks an hour instructing. Cool. You hear that number. I'm not really working eight hours a day. It's, it's engine running time. Uh, and then I started doing ground schools to supplement money, but I could only get, you know, 10, maybe 15 students in a room at a time and, and they paid their fee and it was great, but I would only make as much money 
as the amount of students I could fit in the classroom. The size of the classroom is what held me back in trading time for money. So about that time, I had met my, my now wife, Ashley, uh, and I had this idea to launch an online ground school, which is you know now m0a.com. I said, you know, I can teach this. People, people enjoy the way we teach things, but I can only reach 15 people at a time. How can I leverage this? And when I added the word leverage to my vocabulary uh, in everything we do now uh, to reach uh, a much larger audience, um, that's when it clicked. You know, that's when we, we begin to start making, you know, serious money. Um, when we begin to leverage our time, uh, still still time for money, but when you add that leverage to it, uh, it made it huge. So we took our ground school from just 15 people in a classroom uh, to take it online to the masses, uh, you know, having students literally all over the world um, taking our, our ground school. And, and we're very, very, uh, you know, blessed to do that. Yes, and today's time has never made it easier to leverage your time and to and expand your business because it just blows my mind that I've had clients in Belgium and I'm like, wow, in this day and time, you can connect with someone on the internet or via like YouTube and connect with the masses all at once. Sure, sure. And, and just, to, just to add something else to it, I kind of want to maybe, mm-hmm. maybe take a step back um, about talking about major hurdles and stuff. Um, another major hurdle, and we, we talked about this before, um, is <laughs> still in that time realm. Uh, a struggle for me was like social media. For example, um, I used to, my alarm would go off, I would wake up, and the first thing I would do is grab my phone and check Facebook. And I thought, this is, this is such a poor way to start. Really, it's a, not only a poor way, it's kind of a negative way to start your day. Some of the things that get posted on there sometimes. So I begin now swapping that out for I wake up and I go straight to my uh, the office we have here in the house and I plan out my day. Talk about way more productive. You know, mm-hmm. I was joking with, you know, with Ashley when I got the new iPhone, I just didn't install the Facebook app on it because it can be such a such a time suck uh, sometimes. And, and you talk about hurdles in business, but that's that's a self-induced hurdle. Mm. Uh, and it hurts sometimes because we get shiny object syndrome. <laughs> Um, we get, oh man, did you see this cool new Facebook advertising technique? And oh geez, you've got to be, if you're not emailing people, you need to be emailing. And you, you can get so drowned in everything. Uh, and where we've really had success is just pick something and stick with it. We do a really, really good job. I'd like to think we do a really good job with YouTube. We have a Facebook page. We have a Twitter page. We, we have a presence there. We do some stuff there. and We're cool with it. We make a little money on Facebook, a little money on Twitter. But where I really want to shine is on YouTube. I, I want to learn a niche, an industry. In that case, it was video marketing and dominate it. Um, and, and that's what we you know, set out to do. Um, so pick something, stick with it, and don't fall into the shiny object. Oh, did you read this new book? We do just-in-time learning. When I need to learn something, I'll, then I'll find the book, and I'll breeze right through it. Uh, use an Audible or something like that to get through a book very quickly. But other than that, I try not to engross myself in, in uh, you know, all these new tactics all the time because everything's so changing, and everybody thinks they have the best mm-hmm. this or widget or whatever. Those are really awesome points and I'll tell you why I got a call from someone this week because I've leveraged and used podcasting to explode my business and I never would have thought where it could take me but I really don't play too much on all the other social media and and it's funny when you mentioned this because early on in social media I joined a business group online it was a women business group and Mm -hmm the women would come on and share their struggles in their business. And I thought, this is great. I'll learn from other women, what their problems are, how are they handling it. Well, it kind of became the complaining Mm. area where people would just talk about, oh, it's so hard, or I'm having this or that. You know, it just became wah, 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 wah. And I realized I was spending up to three hours a day talking to these people, and they're awesome people, but we weren't moving anywhere no you've got to surround yourself around those life lifters you know i mean you never want to be the smartest person in the room either no (laughs) you know that's for sure yeah but i like that tip of really picking something and then going with it whatever that social media or that tool will be for your business in particular Mm -hmm. absolutely so as you've gone through your journey here and building your business and becoming a master flight instructor, what has been like you would say like the most important lesson you've learned so far that you could pass on to our listeners? 
gosh, most important lesson. I mean, most important lesson from, you know, flying standpoint and from a business uh, standpoint. And, and the two go hand in hand. Flying is all about preparation. There is so much work that goes into just just one one simple flight hour, one simple flight lesson. Uh, and, and I think the same is is, is true in, in business. Uh, there's a lot of prep, um, but sometimes you just have to get out there and do it. Uh, in aviation, you can read every aviation book you want. However, there's a big difference between what happens in the what happens in the books, what happens out there in the real world of aviation, and you have to get that real world experience. And in the business world, it's the same. I can read every business book I want, but until I get out there and actually do it and, and certainly apply some of these things, uh, you know, that are happening, um, you, you don't, I don't want to say you don't have a clue, but I mean, it, truly, it, it's such a big difference between real world and, and book sort of stuff. I remember when I was at, uh, uh, I was in college. And I, I was signed up for business class, and I was so excited because I, I just had some successes in, in, in flight training and everything, and I was getting real excited about this business class. And I marched up to the business professor, and I said, gosh, this guy is going to have run Fortune 500 companies. He is going to have so much stuff to tell me. I said, hey, you know, Mr. So-and-so, my name is Jason Shepard. I'm so excited to meet you. I just wanted to know what businesses have you run. And he said, Jason. I've never run a business. I'm just going to teach you what's in this book. Now sit down because you're late. Oh, and, and, and that was the start of my business class. And I'm like, this, this isn't going to work very well. I'm just being taught what's in a book. I can go read a book. I want to hear from real world, you know, people. Uh, and that's why, you know, the power of a mastermind and all that sort of stuff has really helped, you know, propel us to where we are today. Yes, I, I can't tell you enough how connecting with like minds and even people who've been there or who have gotten to a place of success and influence that can show you the ropes and say here you know where you can as you say mastermind but also just listen to them speak find out the lessons they've learned the hurdles they've had nothing more I think can make a bigger impact than just reading something out of a book mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> I can just imagine because you're sitting there listening to him thinking, I can go home and read this in a book, and you're just telling me this. Did you stay for the rest of the class, or did you just decide to move on to something else? I am a college dropout, <laughs> uh, and, and that is one of the reasons why. I actually, I actually never finished. Uh, I, again, it kind of it, it's a recurring theme, though, from the skipping school to to every, all I, I was in an aviation college. All I cared about was my aviation classes. I loved those, but the other classes just didn't do it for me. I, I never I finished my flight training training before I finished my college degree. Um, and I got to the point where I'm like, well, I've got all the licenses I want. What do I need these other classes? English? That, and I just didn't show up one day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, there's plenty of uh, successful people that never, uh, uh, you know, never completed college. And I guess I'll, I'll hopefully be one of those stories. You're uh, already one of those stories, Jason. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I got a, got a long way to go, but it'll be all right. But yes, so. you you are already there, and there's only upward. I, you don't ever want to think you're there. Yeah, I mean, because then sure, the road's over. But I like your your mention of being prepared. And aviation is definitely important, and in business as well. But it's interesting because, as you mentioned, you can't just get it from a book. It's like you hit the real world, and things you thought couldn't happen, or you thought mm -hmm. you prepared for, you were not prepared for. And sure. And I've had that happen with my partner who's a pilot, and we've gone out one evening, and we think, okay, we check the weather, it looks fab, tomorrow rain's moving in, but we're good for today, we start out early, wouldn't you know it? We go and have dinner, and we check, and the weather's moved in way earlier, and we're, we're like, we're going to get our butts moving back in, mm -hmm. and we get not only halfway home, and we are, we see straight in front of our path, we are covered in thunderstorms and we ain't going there so mm -hmm. we just had to land at the closest airport which was pretty much closed it was winter and it was east hampton and wow. <laughs> i'd never been there before and yeah. and here we are i didn't bring a change of clothes we didn't bring food because we didn't think we'd be out like past uh, having lunch or dinner and coming back home so mm -hmm. and then we had a, a cell phone that wasn't fully charged oh. and, but do you learn these things when you're going oh, through yeah. flight training not really so it, no. it, it was interesting that after that whole experience the things we learned to pay attention to like okay make sure my cell phone <laughs> mm -hmm. has enough juice in it make sure you have extra cash which we did thank god but it was just a tremendous learning flight it was just so many different things that came up that really got me thinking like to plan ahead of time things you wouldn't think could happen 
Absolutely. So that's awesome. So what is on the horizon for your business in the coming year? Wow. Um, so it, it's going to be awesome. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and I have, geez, I could actually tell you. I got everything right out here in front of me. Ooh. You know, stuff stuff that's coming up. Um, actually, I met with our, our business coach today, and we were kind of going over some some next year stuff. So uh, we, I, I can't reveal a, a name just yet, but we signed a deal uh, with a with a very large uh, college. Uh, we're gonna it, it, again. The irony of this, the, the uh, I'll be Jason Shepard professor uh, now. Um, we signed a, we signed a deal with a very big uh, college. Uh, to launch our uh, online ground school as their exclusive ground school provider across 37 of their their collegiate campuses uh, in their aviation program. Again, this is the guy that you know dropped out of college, and now I'm going to be <laughs> you know, a, a, a administering college classes. So I'm um, working with that. We've got a. We just literally finished today. And if I, if, I, if I sound tired, mm -hmm. uh, this is why we. Um, we just finished up uh, a documentary that we're actually shooting and we're, we're trying to kind of break into that industry. Where can we, we've had so much success with our videos. Can we, can we get away with a feature film type thing? Um, so the title of it, uh, and, and I haven't actually shared this with anybody. So you're, you guys are the first to hear this. Uh, the title of it is called help. I haven't flown in years. Uh, and it's, uh, it's the story of a gentleman uh, who, who I'm helping get current again or helped get current again uh, who hadn't flown since 1980. Um, we're talking, I mean, a lot of rust to work off. So we have a full video and full production team that literally follows, followed us around from uh, waking up in the morning to heading to the studio, uh, to heading to the airport, uh, driving in the car. I mean, everything was captured on film to sitting down in the restaurants uh, and, and really kind of captured his journey, our journey, really, uh, in getting him back current again. And we're hoping to uh, actually premiere that. Uh, sometime in January uh, is the current goal. We actually have a few theaters uh, here in town even interested uh, in, in the prospect of it. And it's just, uh, it's going to be a cool way to get aviation out to people who, um, you know, may wonder, Hey, how do I get into flight training? Mm -hmm. As well as I know there's so many pilots out there that have started and not finished or who became pilots and life gets in the way. Uh, or in, in, in Bill's case, he had a spouse that didn't want him to fly. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, that's something really big, uh, that's coming out that we're really, really, uh, ex I mean, a lot of work went into it. I, we shot over a uh, hundred hours of footage and somehow we have to edit that down to about 90 minutes. So it's, uh, it, it's going to be a, a, a big task, but it's going to be really epic once it all gets said and done with. I, I can't wait to see it. It's going to be cool. Congratulations on both takes. That's awesome. Sure. And what are you going to do with the video? You're going to continue them, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We're gonna we're gonna keep uh, keep pushing forward with everything, and uh, um, yeah, uh, we're gonna see how this documentary goes. But we've got some other stuff in, in the pipeline. We've just got so much stuff going on. Uh, Ashley and I are expecting a little girl in about ten days, t minus ten days. <laughs> uh, so we just have so much uh, happening in our lives. But you know, it's funny too the uh, having our first child, you want to talk about a swift kick in the butt to, to get working. Um, you know, you can look at, uh, uh, any income statement of ours and you can look at the month Ashley and I found out we are pregnant, uh, and the income statement just goes up, uh, sharply compared to last year from there, uh, kind of like a, a, a nice kick in the butt. Like I got a baby coming, like I, I need to start working harder. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's, it's really, uh, so if your business is struggling, I'm, I'm saying go out and have a child, I guess, and that might help. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't. I don't know if that's good business advice, but. Uh. <laughs> well, I know you guys will be awesome parents, and your business will continue to soar. And before we end out here, are there any last words you'd like to leave with our listeners? Gosh, hopefully you're following your passion. That would be that. When when you follow your passion, and you work within uh, exactly where where you're intended to be. Uh, everything just falls into place. It, it's, I'm not saying it's all easy. I'm not saying it's all, you know, unicorns and rainbows or anything. Uh, I, I'm just saying it makes it a lot easier. So when those tough times do come, you're not questioning like, oh, geez, why am I on this job? When the tough times come, you think, yeah, this is tough. But man, I get to fly airplanes every day. Find your passion and work within it. And, and, and don't take the excuse that when someone says, oh, my passion is, my passion is this, you know, find a, find a way to, to, to work within it. Maybe your passion is, is dancing. Uh, 
And you wonder, well, you can't make any money in dancing, Jason. Well, you'd be surprised coming from a guy who teaches about airplanes on the Mm -hmm. Internet. I mean, how much more obscure of a niche can you get into? There's niches out there and there's people looking for what you want to the information you have. Uh, and don't hesitate to put yourself yes. out there. And as you said earlier, Jason, there's in this day and age with all modern technology, there's more and more ways to impact the world and in, in a bigger way than in the past. Absolutely. Just pick one and stick with it. Don't go the shotgun approach. If you want to be an expert at podcasting, go be an expert at podcasting. Video marketing, it, it doesn't matter. And then you can branch out from there, but become really great at something first. Awesome way to end. Awesome tips, awesome advice. Thank you so much, Jason, for coming to Savvy Central Radio and joining us for our third annual aviation month. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it.